All right, this is the Alliance of the Griffin, our new group, and uh, we're based in a whole bunch of different places because we're online. So I'm Andrew here in uh, Vancouver, the Dungeon Master. Tonight we have four players and we're going to start a campaign in our world of Mir. This uh, adventure is called uh, the Mir Chronicles and this is episode one. So let's find out who's playing tonight and um, We'll start with um, Jeff. Who are you playing tonight? Uh, hi, my name's Jeff. I'm going to be playing uh, Harn uh, Finkelrock, aka Stinky, who is a uh, wizard, dwarf wizard, who is rushing out into the world to get away from boredom and books and feels that true wizardry is out in the world, not in a textbook. All right, that sounds good. And Thomas, who are you playing tonight? I'm Thomas Wheaton. I'm in Kelowna, BC. I am going to be playing Thars Grimstone. I'm a dwarven cleric of the war domain who's moving off into the world and getting away from responsibilities. All right. And uh, Chris, who are you playing tonight? I am Chris. I'm in Parksville, BC, and I'll be playing Brule, son of a dwarven thane who, much like uh, his other dwarven friends, has decided he just needs to get out of the oppressive nature of the stronghold. All right, sounds good. And uh, Justin, who are you playing tonight? My name's Justin, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm playing a mountain dwarf thief, trying to <laughs> uh, make his way through the wild world with those few people left that actually trust him. All right, that's good to know. That's what the rest of the party here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll give you just a quick overview of Mir, and then as you travel through the world, uh, you'll learn more and more. It's really appropriate for our all dwarf party because the dwarves have arrived on this continent uh, hundreds of years ago from another continent far, far, far away. And since the dwarves aren't really the greatest seafarers, uh, they've decided to stay here and not travel uh, around the rest of the world. This is the central continent in quite a large world. And um, the dwarves for many years have lived in this underground kingdom under the mountains in the northern part of the world called the Mountains of the Sky. And uh, their main uh, foes this, through these years have been orcs. And they've had endless battles, some of which they lost and the dwarf kingdom was uh, decimated. However, recently in the last you know, 50 to 100 years, the dwarves have won ca campaign after campaign against the orcs, and they've rebuilt their empire underground, their capital city, all their strongholds, and now they're expanding. Uh, there's even a rebel group of evil dwarves who want the, want the whole race to be more aggressive and actually take land from other, uh, other people. And the dwarves have pushed the orcs quite far back uh, into the mountains to the, um, to the west. So um, the other things you know about Mir, even though you've lived mostly in the dwarf uh, stronghold, you know that Mir was actually discovered um, also by the humans about 500 years ago. Uh, there was a legendary group of settlers uh, led by a famous wizard called Oswald Mir who now has his name on the continent and on the world as well. He's that famous. Um, so you've learned over the years, uh, most of the continent is uh, human. Uh, it actually has been fairly peaceful for many years. There's been this very uh, good balance of power. There's no kingdoms in this land other than the dwarf kingdom and the elf kingdom further away. So it's basically a number of large city states and they've been able to kind of just have enough of their territory and just being able to fight each other off. And now uh, for unknown reasons, uh, this balance has started to shift and everything is changing, including dwarves like yourselves leaving the kingdom and going on adventures. And what's happened um, to bring you together is you've heard that an acquaintance um, of yours a uh, distant relative, for example, has um, a, a cousin named Balden, another dwarf, much older than any of you. 
and he lives in the city of Wild, and he runs an inn called the Purple Rabbit. And he's having problems there, uh, and he needed urgent help. And uh, some was lost. Some of the uh, request was lost in translation. But you, your acquaintances and relatives, you trust. And you've heard good things about this dwarf. He's apparently a former adventurer of quite um, high renown. Um, and uh, you're on your way there. Uh, you've rendezvoused at a campsite. You can see here on the screen. And um, you're in the forest known as the Wildwood, which is very close to the city of Wild and also near an inn. So you've met. At this point, it's in the evening, and um, there's an inn nearby that you could stay in, uh, rest overnight, and then head to the big city. And you can see the miniatures here. Um, we have, uh, this is our wizard. This is um, Harn Finkelrock. And here is uh, Devin Keybender, the rogue. And we have um, Theris Grimstone, the cleric. And we have the paladin, uh, Brule Bloodbeard. Nice. I think I need a bigger hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the party. Um, and the Wildwood itself, it's a fairly big forest where you are. Um, you've come down from the mountains. And this area, it's a large forest, uh, mostly made of spruce and hemlock trees. On your travels to this rendezvous point, uh, you've seen elk and deer, and you've seen some parties of humans moving through the forest, some hunters. And um, yeah, that's it. You've just met at the uh, crossroads here. And uh, you know you're all, you found out you're all going to the same place for the same reason. So if you want, you can uh, introduce each other. All right. Well, I stride forward and go, ah, well, what a bunch of ruffians. Seems we're all going to the same place. When well, I heard an innkeeper was in trouble, I thought he could pay us in drink. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe add a little bit of gold to that drink would be a better plan as well. I'm down with the drink on top of it. Right. <laughs> Money. Got it. Money. Uh, Harn will just let out a large poisonous fart and <laughs> kind of stand up and kind of stutter and say, I, yeah, I, I'm just, just here to, to, to join in. I'm just, 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 just here to learn. <laughs> Dude. I walk over and give them. I like up. gold. <laughs> Everybody likes gold. Come on, man. I like drink. Steve walks. Now up you're talking my language. Steve walks up to the fire and crouches down, warms his hands up a little, nods at you all, and uh, questions. Do you know the name of the inn that we're heading to? I know ultimately we're heading to the Purple Rabbit, but uh, the name of the one that's closer by, have any of you guys been there before? No, uh, I seldom have gone out of these human lands. A few times when I was a small boy with my father on trade on boys and the like, but nothing I really remember. Humans are uh, out of the caves, be honest. Unpredictable bunch. <laughs> If memory serves me right, I'm gonna I'm far up. taller than I were, not as tall as I remember. <laughs> I have like a rolled map, and I'll kind of un undo it up, and I'll be like, ah. "I think we're here." All <laughs> right. Nuts. I believe the one we're looking for is called the Sad Giant. The Sad Giant. Well. Any giants that come across us are surely to have a bad day. And I, <laughs> he lets out an uproarious laugh. Giant? I've never seen a giant. Nobody said anything. Look at these humans. Giants. They're giant enough as it is right now. I... Do we want to spend time in their inn or do we want to camp here? 
I always prefer a bed to not a bed, but I'll leave that, you know, I, I, I'm sure I have more than enough to cover us all. Someplace well, you are the thane, son. If you want to put us up for the night, I'll take it. Come. Oh. As I said, a bed is better than not a bed. <laughs> and I have a sneaking suspicion we'll spend plenty of nights sleeping on grounds in whatever lies ahead of us. All right, so it's already starting. <clears throat> it's starting to get a little bit dark already. Um, do you want to take a look around to see if the inn is close by? Yeah, what does our uh, well, our map, well mapped uh, wizard say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have to go that way. And I'm kind of looking at the map, but I'm just kind of thinking it's that way. Okay. I know. Well, you know, we don't spend well, a lot I of time be, above ground. Should probably right. make a roll for that, a wisdom rule. <laughs> Um, you can do like a survival check to see, yeah, wisdom. It's a 14. Nice. So you look at the map again, you look at your surroundings, and you realize that uh, you've come from the north, and you're definitely heading directly south um, to the inn and then to the city in the morning. Perfect. Well, let's continue on to the inn. I mean, a little darkness I'm not necessarily terrified of. We are, yeah. We do live in perpetual darkness after yeah. all. All right. So you start heading uh, to the south uh, down one of the trails. And up ahead, you see about half a dozen. Uh, they look like humans um, with uh, chain mail and they have swords at their side. Um, why doesn't, um, is a, uh, is the I'm going to guess maybe the paladin or the clerics at the front? Oh yeah, I'm kind of up front. I'm the tank, so I know okay. my role. So rule <laughs> notices this group. Rule, why don't you do a wisdom perception check? Oh dear. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm not terrible at. Oh, all right, twenty one, which wow. is almost max. That's a good start. Yeah. Right. So hooray! I love it when your first rule doesn't. Yeah. Ank. So um, you notice that uh, these uh, half a dozen men look a bit nervous. Um, they see you, but they're also looking to from one side of the trail to the other as they walk towards you. Be sharp, boys. Something's about. Uh, then it seems like uh, the men walking towards you see you more clearly. Um, it's, it, as I said, it's just getting dark, so one of them takes a torch out. Uh, the one at the front and uh, looks at Brule and says, uh, I don't think you should be out here right now. Hmm. What's got you so scared? We were uh, just doing a patrol. Uh, we're patrolling in the forest uh, from the city and uh, something's not right out here. Hmm. Well, obviously heard, something's uh, not right. There's no top to the cave. We're in the wrong spot. Yeah, we've heard uh, some reports of people going missing. And um, the only uh, individual in the vicinity people have uh, mentioned as being this dark haired woman. Oh, well. Are you looking for this woman? We are. Um, there's just, there's a lot changing these days. Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure what she has to do with it, but it's a coincidence that every person who reports someone is missing uh, say they saw this woman wandering through the woods by herself. Hmm, well, that, so the that, that, that sounds like a witch. You, you, you poor gentleman have a witch on your hands. Uh, witches aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's why we dwarves. So have you been searching long? Is this something that you just recently started doing? Are you being, are you hired to do it? Uh, we just came from the keep uh, south of the woods and uh, it's been the last few days that we've heard reports of people missing and um, all the patrols are on the lookout. We suggest you probably get indoors soon. We're just heading to the uh, inn down the road here. Oh yeah, they say that's a good idea. Yeah, the, uh, the sad giant. It's uh, yeah, just a little bit further south. 
Say we did come in contact with this woman. Is there a reward for any information about her? Who should we, uh, who should we speak to? I like definitely. the way you think, Keybender. Yeah, definitely. Uh, go to the keep uh, just south of the woods or to the city of Wild itself. Yeah, just see any of the Wild Guard. And he shows you his insignia, which is uh, kind of a uh, stylized golden uh, W with uh, red and blue background. Very well. All right. So you head uh, a little bit further south. You see, actually, there's a small little settlement, a uh, bunch of small wooden buildings. And uh, the first building is uh, the sad giant. Uh, it looks like um, an inn that's not in the greatest of shape, but it's not the absolute worst you've ever seen. Well, being it's our first human inn, it looks like a dump. Yeah. So yeah. Let, me just, let me grab the inn one moment here. Human architecture. These guys should learn how to build with stone more. Agreed. <laughs> How do you get the gateway in the, the other screen to show on the menu here? I usually use Discord, so I'm just figuring this out here. Woohoo! <clears throat> oh, and look at that. There's an in just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Stinky. I think you'll fit in here. Those humans don't smell too good. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. Just kind of, you know, I'll just give them like a, a little look like, okay, and I'll cast a spell on myself. Maybe it's noticeable again, and I forget to cast the spell, so I'll just kind of flower myself up. Oh. A combination of uh, mead and lavender. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you a little bit more now. It's not bad. All right, how's the inn looking? Uh, let me see. First night with two cameras, so. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so here's the paladin. All right. And you see there's a server in here, barkeep. And here's the, um, the wizard. Cleric, rogue. Oh, real figurines. You guys just I see above some... the tables. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Are there and... any open tables? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we yeah. got Tyrone's guard me. Maybe the uh, witch hasn't stolen all the patrons yet. <laughs> so you see um, there's a large table over here that's open. So we'll mosey right on over. All right. Yell across room, barmaid, ales. <laughs> have that same thing and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. On Super oh, Gen. really? Yeah. <laughs> Wife bought it for me for Christmas. Oh, wow. Oh, I had the same thing happen. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Um, yeah, so here is the sad giant. As I said, not in the greatest of condition, but uh, uh, not the worst in you've ever seen. Um, you see there's a couple of women and their children over by the fireplace in the far corner over here and um, but peasants at these tables. There are a couple of guards right here. All um, right. Who have the same uniform, the same insignia as the guards you just saw on the road, but it's not, uh, it's not the same. They weren't in that group. So what's the overall feel as we walk through the door here? 
So it's uh, it's fairly busy. Um, it's uh, it's getting uh, sort of like people are just arriving for dinner. So it's starting to get noisier as people arrive and people are starting to order food and drink. Is it like 96% human? Yeah, you're the only non-humans. Uh, you don't see any elves. Uh, you know, elves are also um, uh, not uncommon in Mir, but right now it's all humans except for you. I kind of like right. the dev was asking, do we get this feel like people are nervous after the whole vanishing thing we heard from the guards or is everybody kind of jovial it's, or just end of work normal stuff? That's a good question. Why don't you do another uh, wisdom perception check? Beep. Perception. Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> Pass that 12, I rolled a four. 16. 16, that's not bad. Okay, yeah. Um, the, the guards, once again, just like the, uh, the guards you saw on the road, they do look nervous. And um, some of the other people, you get a kind of, um, yeah, you get the impression that they're trying to uh, make the best of the situation, but you see they do look a bit stressed. Yes. Okay. So he's got a black haired woman in the inn now that I've become hyper vigilant and I'm scared of witches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no black haired woman in the inn. All right. Well, uh, I'll order us all a round of ale and meals. Okay. I, I'm assuming pretty. This is a commoner in, so I'm. Will a gold piece cover it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Just one moment here. I'm looking for my uh, menu. Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay. So yeah, there's. You always have a detailed menu in these games. So um, this in. Has um, has its own tavern, which you've walked into. Um, they the uh, server comes over the barmaid, barmaid, and she says that they have um, wild mead, which is the one of the cheaper meads, five copper pieces for a tankard. Um, but they also have uh, the queen's ale, uh, which is a little bit more expensive. And um, they have wild wine as well, which is quite a bit more expensive. Oh, we're more of an ale crew, so we'll get the uh, the mid level ale there. All right. Um, so I can't drink the cheap stuff. He says to you guys, he's like, oh, right. we so can't the wild... drink the cheap stuff. Okay. So the wild meat is only uh, five copper pieces each. Right. And uh, the uh, server says that the, uh, the specials for today are uh, quail, uh, roast stag, and um, bark soup. We'll, we'll be doing stag, thank you. Yeah, we'll be doing the stag. The stag yeah. is four silver pieces each. So 16 silver plus another... 16 silver, so we're up to a grand total of like three gold with tip. Exactly, yeah. All right. Oh. Remove. I pay, I just pay. Okay. So the paladin uh, treats all of you. Yeah. Like to me, he, you know, I'm, I, I'm still living in the noble frame of mind, not I'm a poor adventurer now. Right. So Steve, he's just like, oh, three gold, that's nothing. Here you go. Eve nods towards Brule. My thanks, bro. And uh, turns towards the table with the guards. Are they, mm -hmm. um, do they seem fairly approachable? Yeah, they're definitely, uh, it looks like they're relaxed. Uh, their swords are put away. They put their helmets down on the table. Looks like they're there for dinner. All right, well, D will approach the guards. Um, he spent very, very, very little time around humans. He really doesn't know how to read them or anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. He approaches, you know, cautiously. He says, good evening, sirs. We, uh, we just bumped into one of your patrols just outside of town. Made mention of, uh, kind of looks around, being courteous of, of the potential um, concern of, of mentioning the name, but 
he kind of leans in a little and says, they made mention of uh, of some sort of dark lady you seek. Um, yes, uh, this is true. Uh, I guess rumors have traveled fast, Worf. Um, yeah, and a number of people have disappeared uh, from the farms just to the south of the Wildwood and in the Wildwood. Uh, unfortunately, we just found uh, one of the victims. Uh, I don't think these people might be found alive because the person we found had bite marks on their neck and was deceased. That does not sound good. No, that does not sound good at all. Have I ever heard of anything that would um, result in wounds like that? Um, do you you, have? Yeah, why don't you do a nature check? Right. Uh, that's... Um, oh, nine. So you've heard of some sort of stories which you thought were myths, like uh, fantasy creatures, undead creatures that might try to take life away from living creatures, but you haven't really heard much in detail. All right. Uh, has your local keep uh, enlisted outside aid yet in regards to this? Is there a reward? Uh, there definitely would be a reward, they say. Um, yes, we're trying to get more soldiers to come up from the city. Um, but, you know, there's the times are changing. There's a lot there's a lot going on. Uh, we have to make sure we protect the south flank. Of course, you know about the goblins down there. Uh, goblins. All right. Goblins. And then, well, of course, that... in the city, we're having lots of problems. Uh, uh, there's a, a rogue gang uh, operating right now, and we're trying to uh, clamp down on them as, them as well. And then what you notice one of the our, one of the guards, um, Dev. When the, when the other guard talks about this rogue gang, he just kind of smiles and looks away. Okay. Hmm. Is this, uh, is, is Harn within earshot of hearing all of this? Uh, yeah, you're not far. Um, we'll say we that- uh, them doing that at the same time. Yeah, hey, Dev has just come over to the table next to you. You guys are right next to that table, so you can hear everything. Okay, Perfect. I'm gonna nervously <laughs> Uh, down my drink and then I'm going to grab my mug and I'm going to wander off to the uh, the bar person okay uh, the server and I'm going to get four more okay actually no I'm going to get five okay I'm going to have two I'm going to bring them back to the table and I'm going to be grumbling about I don't want to be going after no witches they'll turn you into a newt <laughs> All kinds of nastiness, and I have a I have a familiar that's a weasel, and I'm gonna like just kind of like he's gonna like pop out and see like this used to be my neighbor and look what happened to him kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not I'm not keen on going after uh, witches and foul things that lurk in the dark that chew on people's bodies. It's not my thing. All right. You know, suddenly fighting goblins isn't so bad, and I'm gonna down um, another drink. So I'll and I'll buy one for, of course, all my friends as well. And okay. I'm gonna down my second one right away, and kind of like maybe like sip the, the, the third one. There. <laughs> okay. You're a twitchy uh, little fellow, aren't you? There, stinky. I'll pat you on the shoulder, and then I'll quietly and subtly scan the room since I've been listening to my friend's conversation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. with divine senses just to make sure that we are in fact among the living Source. all right so you, you use your divine sense and within 60 feet of you you don't sense any undead uh celestials or uh, desecrated or sacred ground um, much as i expected <laughs> good yeah so, so deep will uh head back to the table with his companions okay and uh i'll say I'm not sure if you overheard much of the conversation between me and the guards, but this dark lady they mentioned, they, they, they figure is associated with a number of corpses that have surfaced in the area, corpses with puncture wounds in their neck, which they believe resulted in their deaths. Puncture wounds. There's also speak of a local gang or rogues guild, which I don't think mm. they take too seriously. And, uh, and the, the usual goblin activity, which we've all been well aware of in the region. Well, you know, the rogues are a human concern. That's not ours. 
our main part's in the city, getting in and talking to the guy at the Purple Rabbit. Yes, Fair we enough. should the Purple Rabbit. Yes, we Fair should. I am, always, I am always just looking for any more opportunities for us. That's all. Now, I, I agree. Harm. Always a little chagrin to... I do nod towards Har and say... Leave I do commoners to, to foul beasts, but these guards hey. seem competent enough. We're headed south anyways. On the way there, if we happen to come across, across a dark-haired human woman, she happens to fall on her axe and hammers, we collect the money for it. We're okay so with weird. this. Very well, Ferris. And uh, Deve sits back and grabs the first mug available to him and has a drink. Sounds good. All right, so you continue having uh, dinner in there and it actually it seems fairly peaceful. Um, after another hour or so, a few people uh, leave the tavern. So it starts to thin out and now there's just uh, one, uh, it looks like uh, one hunter at a table by himself and then the two guards uh, look like they're enjoying their, uh, their meat after their meal. So I'm gonna buy us all another round. All right. Buy a round for the guards as well. All right. Um, so that's going to be about another uh, either one silver piece or um, you can share with uh, Harn and make it a gold piece for all of that. Okay. Okay. And I then think I uh, get a gold for everything. Yeah. All right. Uh, now that we're reaching about three tankards of ale, let's have everybody do a con check. I'm on four. Remember, I got an extra one. He pulled up the double. Yeah, I'm nervous, little bugger. <laughs> so, how is Harn for a con check? He's fantastic. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I rolled the natural 20, so that's the first Dude. one. Nice. Um, what about Theris for a con check? Oh, damn it. I can drink like uh, that. I'm at a 15. 15? Uh, Brule? I'm killing it today. I got a. 22, wow. which is almost as high as I can roll. All right. <laughs> this could be a late night. And uh, Deeb, <clears throat> Steven. Well, Deeb was hesitant. He was only going to have one mug of ale, but uh, when in Rome, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do we want a con saving throw or just a con check? Uh, con saving throw. Okay. With advantage from a dwarf, right? 12. 12. Okay. All right. Yeah. You all, uh, appropriately enough for your race, have no <laughs> problem with this meat. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling this might be a theme in this campaign. All right. Change the name of the inn from the sad giant to the drunken dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Eventually, the two guards leave. Uh, the hunter leaves. A couple of the uh, barmaids are finished. And um, Could we grab the hunter beforehand and ask him about before he gets away from us? Yeah, you, for sure. You can stop him at the door and talk to him. Yep. Yeah. Sir, you look like you spend time in the woods. Usually, he says. Uh, that's where I live. I live here in Fleming. Yeah. Have you heard anything about this dark woman being around? The one that's been taking people out? Yeah, strangest thing. I mean, no one has seen her uh, in any of the villages in the forest. Uh, on the trail, it's just people off the trail. Uh, some friends of mine, other hunters, uh, they've seen her running through the woods uh, and how somebody could be by themselves in these woods unarmed. I mean, there are wolves out here. Um, I, I don't understand it, but she's the only one who's been around where these people have vanished. Huh. Has anyone got an idea of like, she human or elven or definitely definitely human uh he said and um it's happened more towards the south part of the forest uh towards where the keep is where the uh some of the guards are uh, stationed oh. so if we start wandering south and having to walk off the trail mm, i don't know if i would do that he said like i said there's still wolves around yeah Okay. Wolves. You hear that? Do not recommend. What are wolves? Are those like dogs? They're like small wargs. 
Oh, right, right. Wood wards, got it. Yeah. Like goblins ride those things. Orcs get on the bigger ones. Yeah, that's right. All right, well. Great. So um, is the, are the uh, dwarves going to uh, hit the sack? Get some rest before your journey in the morning? Yeah, we'll take a room at the inn for the night. As I said, uh, a bed is always better than not a bed. Okay, so when you meet the innkeeper, you find out his name is Warren, another human. And um, he lets you know the rooms are... Swarming with them. The rooms are uh, one silver piece, uh, but if you wanted, you could double up and just get two rooms. All right. I'll pay for one room. Yeah, I'll just... I think we can pay for, for our rooms on this one. Yeah. Okay. And you shared two and two two uh, two dwarves in each room. Sure. So there's two right. beds. All right. So yeah, two beds. Yeah. Then yeah. Sure. No problem. We need to flip a coin here. See who goes in with Stinky. <laughs> no, no. Stinky gets his own room. I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's only two rooms left. Oh well. We've got to graciously take my take the hit tonight. <laughs> right. Okay. So you've been you've been asleep for uh, less than half an hour, and um, you're awoken, all of you, by a tremendous noise downstairs uh, in the tavern. And uh, then, <laughs> let me look at your passives. Um, Devan is the first one to notice uh, what he thinks is a shout and a call for help downstairs. All right. Well, I, I, I make sure everyone's awake. You know, um, if I, I assume Harn, Harn is stinking and snoring, I give him a quick shake. <laughs> I think you and I are in a room together and Brule and Harn are. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, wait. Faris, did you hear that? Uh, yeah. What was it? I don't Just know. to clarify, we heard the same thing. As Deva uh, starts donning his armor, he looks towards him and says, we should check it out. Get ready. Pull on the chain, grab the shield, grab the hammer. And then we'll make our way out of our rooms over to our companions' rooms slowly, well, quickly and quietly okay. to, uh, to see if they've heard any similar noises. What is this quietly you speak of? <laughs> well, quietly for dwarves. <laughs> so the other two dwarves hear uh, a knock on their door and I guess Dev Devon is whispering outside he All right, probably well, be there before me while I'm pulling on the armor so 100% <laughs> yeah yeah I mean can we even don armor or yeah okay well I'll throw my chain shirt over my head grab my shield and open the door as I hear like shink as he's pulling the armor over his Bro. head Bro, keep it down there's noise in the base. There's, noise, the there's noise in the common room. What's Follow. that harm? Sorry. Yeah. So harm's going to fall over with the chain shirt, just kind of throwing it on, stumbling, probably hit the door frame once or twice, and then force his way out with his hammer into the hallway. So, yeah, unsheathing one of his short swords, um, Dee's going to head down towards the common room. Um, try uh, as stealthily as possible. Would you like to check? Yeah. Can you do a, death, a dexterity stealth check? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> 24. <laughs> He's quiet. Wow. You're a ghost. The rest of us are like, not so much. All right. So, so he's going to try to sneak down. Are you guys going to just uh, let him go ahead a bit uh, and then go and not do stuff? For ahead? sure. Yeah. yeah. Let him do his thing. Don't screw my checkup, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like, no, no. We brought him with us because he's a sneaky I'll boy. be right behind you. <laughs> I'm never in a hurry to jump in this the unknown anyway, so I'm totally fine staying behind. I, De, uh, Dave is, his intention is to get uh, as soon as he has an eye, an idea of what's going on to stop and either report back by whispering or stepping back a little back towards his command companions to update them. I'm right. not charging into anything for sure. Make my way most slowly words. down the hallway of the upstairs or whichever one we're on, and just so it's an easy relay for him to give information back. Yeah, and unlike most dwarves, Brule, you do notice, actually uses a sword. What's wrong with you, man? So uh, you see Devon uh, sneaks ahead and he gets to the top of the stairs and looks down into the inn. And uh, you see a striking sight. You see um, four 
heavily armored uh, men with full helms, and they're attacking uh, the staff um, of the tavern that you saw a little while ago. Uh, what? One of the one of the uh, barmaids is badly injured. It's got a huge cut on her arm already, and they're these huge. Um, men, armored men, are just swinging their swords uh, with absolutely no mercy. Bars. They aren't wearing any as emblem of, like, that patrol group, right? No, they're, that, um, no, not at all. And um, so you come down and there's, uh, so Devin is here. Um, you see right here one of the men attacking a barkeep, and then over here, there's three more men attacking the other staff. All right. So yeah, I turn towards the companions. I'm like, quickly, there's people in trouble. And I, you know, get my hand axe in my offhand, short sword, made hand, make my way down the stairs, trying to like wait for my companions to kind of barge past me okay. um, with this go code and then um, kind of follow up behind. All righty. Right. I'm going to be charging. <laughs> yeah, all I needed to hear was there's people in trouble and like, my, my goody nature is ready to go. All right. So do we get a surprise round for them not knowing we're there or? Yeah, so um, for sure um, the rogue does. He, he would be at the front. So if he wants to use his um, uh, surprise. The rogue's, in, the rogue's intent, um, if he's going to um, capitalize on a surprise round mm -hmm. is to use his companions as his surprise. Okay. All right, so De Devon comes down the stairs, and then I, I'm saying you're stepping to the side as the paladin is the first one in. And um, the cleric and the wizard are falling. So the paladin for sure has surprise on um, the first uh, man here who's attacking. All right. And you see there's a number of the tables have been turned over as well. And all the doors in the inn are open out to the night air. All right, so it's actually well, quite cool in here. Okay, so I guess I kind of get to act at this point by the looks of it, correct? Yeah, you have it, and you have advantage to attack that um, first man. Nice. Well, I will uh, quickly move up on him, trying to interpose myself between him and the barmaid as much as possible. Okay. <clears throat> And then I am just going to proceed to try my best to carve him into tiny little pieces. All right, we have advantage. Two of the giant metal smash ice smashers there. And no double threes is not going to do the job. Oh, my. Yeah. That what are you hurts, doing, man? But what are you going to do? <laughs> All right. So the paladin, you're using a sword. Yes, I actually, unlike most dwarves, I, I use a longsword mostly because okay. it just chaps my father's, uh, it drives him nuts. Like what kind of dwarf uses a sword? And it, it's <laughs> more of a symbol of rebellion at this point. All right. So that was uh, your surprise. Now they've, uh, they've noticed the four dwarves coming downstairs and uh, we get to do initiative. Hopefully, I won't roll three this time. Oh, that's much better. Good try, I'll, though. I'll just uh, I'll go in order here that I have been going before. So, Harn, how are you doing for initiative? I am doing about a ten. Okay. And Theris, nine. The wizard gets to go before the cleric. Yes. Uh, and uh, Brule, seventeen for me. Okay. And Devon. 15. 15. All right. So, Brule, you get to attack again, uh, but you're not, not, not with advantage this time. All right. Well, I am going to definitely. Uh, is the 16 a hit? Uh, it is a hit, yeah. He takes nine damage from me All as right. I uh, come in and bash him a bit with my shield just for show and then give him a good slash rate, trying to hit him as best I can to disable that axe arm of his. All right. Um, yeah, so you hit him. Uh, it looks like you do actually quite a bit of damage to his armor. Uh, and then when you hear him shout out, 
it's not a human cry. It's a strange kind of almost like an animal sound. Oh, geez. And again, he has a full helm, so you can't actually see his face. Uh, but you look down, and his hands are red. What? Red, like red with red. big, na- like with big nails too. I don't huh. think it's healthy. Big, big fingernails. And we aren't. There isn't some like random red orc tribe that I'd be aware of. No. Nothing okay. Weird. Nothing random, you know, some sort of like crazy blood tribe or something, no, right? The orcs in Mir are like dark blue or gray. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the paladin attacked one. Um, next in order is De- Devon. Devon is going to throw his hand axe at the uh, at the paladin's opponent. All right. And you want to be about ten feet away. But yeah. Okay. Sounds fair. Ooh, hitting AC 16 for six points of, I guess that's slashing damage. All right. So a couple of uh, things happen at the same time. You throw your hand axe. It hits uh, the creature in the head, in the helmet. It knocks the helmet off as it cuts into its head. And you see this is its face. Wow. Jeez. And it, you're pretty sure that this is uh, what you've heard about is a hobgoblin. Oh, right. and Goblins it, with organizational skills, not good. <laughs> as it hits uh, it in the head, uh, it also smacks it so hard in the head, it drops down on the ground, on the floor of the inn, and it's not moving. Nice, good hit. So it goes down. Um, Devin, are you going do you want to use a bonus or Devin, do you want to use a bonus action at all? Yeah, Dave's gonna move um, behind the bar there. Okay. Take take advantage of some cover. Okay. Um, and really quickly as he's doing so, can you give me kind of a basic idea of what's going on with that crowd over there? Uh, with the with which? The yeah, the the remaining f- okay. um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's one of the um, attackers going after the barkeep here. Mm-hmm. Another one attacking one of the barmaids, and another one attacking another barmaid over here. Perfect. So yeah, so Dave's going to move behind the bar there. It's uh, just being the fact that he's a dwarf and it's a human bar, it should, you know, naturally, <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be uh, some sort of, you know, cover without any sort of added. Okay. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Natural uh, cover for size. Right? Yeah, and that's actually what happens. It's uh, It's the monster's turn, and they the three of them turn to look at in the direction of where the dwarves are. And one of them says, uh, I thought there were four in common. So yeah, Devon has suddenly vanished. Perfect. Um, they all continue to attack um, the, uh, the staff. So one, the one on the far side misses with its um, long sword. Uh, the next one misses as well. <laughs> and the last one goes after the barkeep. And misses again. Leave him alone. He brings us beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that was the uh, that was spectacular rolling by them. Okay. You can keep uh, rolling like that. We're okay with yeah, that. Yeah, it's Harn's turn. Well, Harn definitely is going to try to target the one that's attacking the barkeep because really that's his um, source of calm is okay. the barkeep and what okay. he can do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's going to sit there and he's going to summon a four inch little diameter of a green noxious substance and he is going to hurdle it at the top goblin that's attacking the barkeep. Okay. It's a, I'm casting chromatic orb. But... Okay. And that's going to be 13 plus 5, 18. That is a hit. That is a hit. Nice. Okay, let's do some serious damage and protect our barkeep because really that's, you know, six, 13, 13. Oh, wow. Uh, that's 21 points of damage. <laughs> wow. I rolled a, a seven, a six, Ooh. and an eight. <laughs> All right. So he exploded. 
<laughs> so he gets hit by a big, huge orange um, diameter sphere of green, poisonous, noxious, bad stuff. All right. I attack him with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, that creature collapses to the ground, and as he does, his helmet uh, falls off, and he reveals himself as another hobgoblin, and he's just choking on the poisonous uh, gas and dies. Um, and I tell my party I've saved the barkeep. <laughs> Huzzah! It's, uh, All right, we're done. You guys carry on with the rest. <laughs> Theris's turn. Can I reach them? With the 25 feet of movement, I know we're not that fast, but hey. 25, um, 10, 20, you can get to here. Does that put me in range to hit them? Uh, with a ranged weapon. The closest one is here and there's one over here. Well, they didn't roll too good anyways, but I'm gonna drop. So I'm getting as close as I can to it. Pull my glove back a little bit, bite it so I can get a little bit of blood. Yell at the hobgoblins. Fight us, you cowards. Come after a real enemy. I'm casting Bane on them. Okay. Yes. One of the best little debuffs in the game. I love so it. good. <laughs> Believe me, as soon as I get my first spell, Bless will be in the repertoire for all of us. Uh, Christmas saving throw. Yeah, so they have charisma saving throws. Yeah. Uh, the first one, 13. I think mine's attack save, charisma 12. So yeah, it's got to be the 12. Okay. So, because I'm out of practice with fifth edition, does that add on my wisdom bonus to their saving throw? Eight plus your proficiency plus your wisdom bonus because you're a cleric. Yeah. Oh, good. Then add two more on. So he has to hit 14. Okay, so uh, one made it and one fails. Okay, all of his attacks, his saving throws, everything he does, he loses a d4 on it. Okay. All right. Um, it's back to Brule. All right, so Brule is going to, being his stubby dwarf self, uh, kind of run behind the table over by the door there. Uh, more forward. Yeah, correct. Even jump right up on the table. Hell of it. And, uh, and then I'm going to chuck a javelin at the guy behind the uh, table there. That guy, correct. <laughs> I rolled a one. I rolled a one. All right, here it is. The first one of the night. Um, <laughs> you can uh, choose uh, the easy, easiest one if you, is a d4. If you can roll a d4, we'll say that one or two is yes and three and four is no. All right, that's easy. No, it's a no. Oh, okay. No extra effects. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Uh, and back into <laughs> uh, to Devon. <clears throat> All right. Dev is going to grab from the bar the closest, most sturdiest, most throwable bottles. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Tumble over to that bar to his left uh, onto the floor and uh, throw the bottle at the closest um, target. Okay. Throw a bottle. You should have two. All right. How do you want me to do that? Um, just do... Um... A throw uh, and add your dexterity, a, a d20 and add your dex and okay. your... Uh... Oh, 18. All right. So 14 you plus four. What's that? Right. You throw a bottle right over the barmaid's head and it hits the uh, hobgoblin in the head. I was worried I was going to hit her. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you roll the one, there's a good chance. Right? I was like, oh, man. Yeah. So you <laughs> throw a, a d4 and add your dex uh, modifier for damage. Uh, d4... It's a two plus, uh, so five. All right. So that definitely injures him. And he looks up and says, when I'm done with her, you're next. <laughs> uh, 
And the other, the other hobgoblin in the corner, you can tell by the sound of their voices and they're exactly the same size as the others. They have red hands, again, big, thick nails. Um, the one in the corner yells, ah, oh, I can't wait until we take this whole place. Mm. Uh, and uh, they attack, and first they're going after the barmaids again. Um, oh, D20. Oh, the one that got hit in the bottle crushes uh, this woman to the ground. No. Uh, and the other um, hobgoblin misses swinging its sword. That's not good. And it's Harn's turn. Um, the one that just knocked the, the poor barmaid to the ground. I know I have 25 feet of movement. Can I go down the stairs, kind of get behind the bar and still be within 10 feet of him? One second. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I want to get behind the bar. That's perfect. And I'm going to, as a, yeah, as an action, I'm going to cast a poison spray on the guy who just knocked the bar made down. Okay. I want to make sure that I'm going to have the bar as kind of a buffer between me and him, but still 10 feet. Okay. Uh, that's a constitution saving roll. Um, yeah, he rolled 16. Oh. Okay, so that's a waste. Um, as a bonus action, I'll pour myself a mug of mead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Priority. Um, I like it. Ferris. Oh, no. Charge the closest one. Come in swinging. All right. And hopefully it's the guy that I've got the Bane actually working on. Yeah. Seventeen to hit. Seventeen to hit him? That's a hit. Come on. Do this. Uh, five points of damage. All right. Um, yeah, he looks like he he's badly uh, injured. He almost goes down after getting hit by the uh, the cleric. And does come charging and swinging a big warhammer at him. <laughs> yeah, warhammer. Um, and we're back to Brule. All right. How bad did, does this barmaid look? Like she's like bleeding out, or is just dead? She's in rough shape. Still All right. Brew Br will run over. Uh, shield her with his shield and lean down and touch her with his hand and heal her for one hit point with his lay on hands. All right. So suddenly some of her wounds magically heal. And um, it is back to Devon. Enough to make sure she won't die. <laughs> All right. So, Deev, he's uh, still got one bottle remaining. So what I would like to do is um, I can't add my ability bonus to the damage, but I can, what I like to do is use this, my two weapon fighting to throw the bottle uh, in my offhand at this, at the hobgoblin. If I hit him, it would just be a straight damage roll. I can't add my ability to it. So I'm taking advantage of two and fighting. Um, move and attack with my short sword. Sure. All right. So the the throw hits uh, AC sixteen. Hit for one point of damage. Okay. And then I move up to him. If I can get there, can I get to him between the table and the girl and the my companions? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then I hit him with my short sword, hitting AC. Oh, <laughs> oh fudge. I rolled a one. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, D4, one and two is yes. Roll high, man. Roll high. Here we go. First I rolled a four. Oh. oh. Here we right. go. Escapes extra damage. All right. Um, so that hobgoblin is still staggering around. 
Uh, now you see that the other barmaid actually broke free and she is running uh, and she runs behind Deep by the uh, by the bar near Harn. And it is, oh, the hobgoblin's turn. So the badly injured one um, decides to go after the cleric. Come on, what you got? And he rolls a 15 to hit. Oh, I definitely blocked that with my shield. <laughs> All right. The other one charges over and goes after the rogue. He runs up behind you. Oh, not a great roll. You guys are lucky tonight. Uh, that's a nine. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a little bugger. Hard. Yeah, he, the, the little rogue is too fast. Yeah, wow. Um, with my mug of mead in one hand, uh, I hold out my hammer to the other one, and I'm going to summon another. It is is the one that has would I would I be aware of which one has the bane on it and which one doesn't? Yeah, this one, the badly injured one, is the one that has bane, the one that's surrounded. Okay, I'm going to cast um, Poison Spray on him, so he'll need to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. Uh, three. I don't think that's going to be good. So minus a d4. So <laughs> negative one. one. <laughs> negative one. And that's going to do... Wow, that's good. Um, that's going to be 11 points of damage. <laughs> and the Hobgoblin goes down. I'm doing good nice. damage. Yeah, dude. dude. You're crushing it. You're I'm just gonna, going to... <laughs> Um, I'm going to take, this is way better than my last character. I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm going to take a sip of my mead and I'm going to hold up um, with, with holding my, my hammer in one hand, I'm going to hold up two fingers, kind of like two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Theris, there's one uh, enemy left. He in range of me to get to him on foot? Theris is the paladin. Oh yeah, he's right here. Yeah, totally. I can't make it worse that well. So it's there. Oh yeah, come in swinging. E. Got a ten. Ten on the attack. Oh, that's a miss. Um, I'm gonna use my war priest ability. And use my bonus action to attack him again. Okay. 13. Thir 13? Yep. That's a miss too. Ah! <laughs> All right. Um, back to Brule. Arn threw me off with him with his two kills. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to press the advantage with my buddy there and go after the one guy left standing. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's, let's finish him off. How is he looking, like, freshy? Uh, he looks good, actually. A two is not going to be a hit, so no. I harmlessly strike against his armor. Eh. All right. <laughs> uh, Deev. Uh, Deev moves to flank the war priest. Okay. I don't know if you're doing flanking. No. Okay. Um, flanks him just the same. And uh, as he moves and sheaths his dagger into his offhand and um, attacks the hobgoblin. So a short sword hits, oh man, AC9. Nope. Which probably doesn't do it. But the dagger. It's AC 15 for... That's just a miss, too. Okay. Oof. 16's our number, then. All right. Um, Damn. It fights back. Goblins. The sword. Oh, no. <laughs> Did he roll I, a one now? I think I need... No, but I think I need to change that dice. So <laughs> it tries to uh, hit the cleric again, and it rolls a nine. It misses you. Uh, you're just... Sprite, sprite, uh, sprightly little uh, dwarfs tonight. Because we're short. 
Everybody's they're used hard. to fighting much taller opponents. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so we're back to Harn. Keep them alive. Find out what these things are doing here. I was about <laughs> to say the same thing. <laughs> uh, keep them alive, eh? Um, is there one that looks a little bit less injured? There's only one left. The only one left? That's the K. Um, can I kind of... Is, is he occupied with fighting the cleric? Can I kind of sneak up behind him and kind of bonk him on the back of the head for non-lethal damage with my Warhammer? Um, you can try, yeah. You can definitely get over there. Okay. And... Um... Yeah, you can climb over the bar and then try to hit him over the head and knock him out. Okay, as I try to climb over the bar, um, I spill my ale and I slip <laughs> and I fall flat on my face. No! <laughs> and my good rolls are over. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled the one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. D4, 10. Yeah, it was only a matter of time. Uh, that's going to be a four. All right. No extra effects. <clears throat> All right. Theris. <laughs> Other than I... I spilled ale and my pride. <laughs> Dude, don't spill the ale. Can I use a grapple type action and try to take him out of the knees and just trip him to the ground? Yeah, you can do, you have a strength contest with him, for sure. Sounds good. Sweet. So a strength check. A 15. Uh, it's a tie. You have to do it again. Ah! One more time. All right, all right, all right, all right. Do it. Ooh. 22. Oh, yeah. You, you take him down to the ground, uh, and he's pinned right now. Um, so it is Brule's turn. You see that Theris has tackled the hobgoblin to the ground. Oh um, man, I am doing a full on old school flying elbow right to his <laughs> face in an attempt to just knock him cold. All right, yeah, if you hit him, he's 220 out pounds of <laughs> dwarf right on his melon. <laughs> oh, look, climb up on the bar first. You gotta come off the top rope. Uh, so that would end up being a sixteen. Yeah, you hit him. Nineteen, rather. Yeah. Mapping All those smashes right into his face. Nice. More that. Time. Basically, I'll. I'm just trying to KO him so we can tie him up. Yeah. What kind of damage did you do? Uh, that would be what one plus strength or D four plus strength. Is that non-lethal, or do they even have that in 5th edition? It's not really a thing. You can just choose not to kill somebody, basically. Yeah. I think it's kind of lame. As long as you say before you do it, you can try yeah. to pick him up. Like, I, I'm specifically not trying to kill him, and assuming it's a D4, I did 6 damage. All right. And and because of their coming, the angle you came in, the force you came in, you definitely knock him out. So now you have uh, a an unconscious hobgoblin lying in the wreck of the tavern good work bro maybe well, he's about to miley cyrus now a very <laughs> tied up bob goblin all right you're gonna tie him up yeah oh yeah get him. i'm gonna go check on the bartender yeah i'm gonna pour myself a mug of eel, another uh, mug of meat since i spilled the last one and i'm gonna right. look at the bartender nice place good food delicious mead uh two stars because of the hobgoblin <laughs> I was going to give him like five for entertainment. D's going to head towards the door to see if there's any outside or if the, you know. Start closing this place up. If we're, if we're, if we're a threat for many more pouring in. All right. Uh, um, secure the perimeter. Sure. The, the uh, rope checks uh, the perimeter, looks outside, and there, there's uh, no sign of any more 